Hey guys, welcome back to part 14 of the Decker tutorial. So in the last video, we added our component builder interface to our activity component again. Remember, this allows us to override the builder definition of our activity component and this way add these binds instance methods over which we can pass values to our dependency graph at the runtime. And the only difference between a component builder and a subcomponent builder is that we return the subcomponent builder from a parent component. In version 2.22 of Dagger, they have added another alternative to such a component builder, which is the component or subcomponent factory. If you don't have this annotation available, make sure that your Dagger version is at least 2.22. And we can't have such a factory and a builder in the same component. But before we delete our builder, let's set up our factory so we can compare these two. A component factory is also an interface, or alternatively an abstract class, which we usually call factory. And in here we put exactly one abstract method. Similarly to our build method in the component builder, it has to return the component itself. And the name of this method is arbitrary, but it's convention to call this create. And as parameters to this method, we have to pass the same values that we passed over separate methods in our builder. So this means we uh, take binds instance and put it directly in here. And after that we put our named horsepower parameter. Then we make a comma and pass the second parameter. Again binds instance. And then we take our engine capacity. Now before we talk about the benefits of this, let's finish setting up everything. As I already said, we have to delete our builder. Just one more thing I want to mention here. You can now also put these binds instance annotations directly on the parameter. This has been made possible to keep consistency with these factory create methods. But again, we can't have a factory and a builder in the same component, so we delete our builder. And then we go into our app component. Because instead of a builder, it now has a binding for the activity component factory. And again, it makes sense to uh, change the method name as well. And then we go into our main activity. Where we now can't call get activity component builder. Instead, we call get activity component factory on which we can call our create method and pass horsepower and engine capacity directly. So let's run this and see if it still works. And we can see our log messages and we still pass horsepower and engine capacity as runtime arguments. And the most important benefit of this new setup, besides being more concise, is that we now have compile time safety. Because with our builder before, we can just forget calling one of these builder methods. And this would not be detected at compile time. Instead, we would get a runtime exception if one of them is missing. But with such a factory method, this is not possible. Because the compiler will immediately detect if a value is missing or if we are passing a wrong type. So you should favor these new factories over builders whenever possible. But there are some situations where you will still need the builder. For example, if you want to make it optional to pass an instance of a module or let Decker instantiate it. But you will know when that's the case. And now let's also see how this looks for a normal component. So we will make a little change to our driver. And assume that it also needs a runtime argument passed to it. Which will be a, a string name. I don't make this value private on purpose because I want to access it later. And we will pass this name over a constructor, so we right click, generate, constructor, we keep name selected and click OK. And normally we should pass this name over a binds instance argument, the same as we do it for horsepower and engine capacity. But since we already use binds instance arguments in our activity component, let's this time use a stateful module so we have both situations covered. And we still pretend that our driver is in a third party library, so we can't annotate the constructor with add inject directly. Instead, we go into our driver module, and we will pass this value to our driver constructor from here. So we add a private string, driver name. Again, we pass this value over a constructor. We have to delete the abstract keyword, so we can instantiate this module. 
and then we delete the static keyword as well, so we can pass this driver name directly to the driver constructor. And then we go into our app component, where we now also want to create such a factory. So this time we write add component factory. Again, it's an interface, which we call factory. And again, we put one abstract method in here that returns the component itself, which we call create. And since our app component needs a driver module instance, and this driver module doesn't have a default constructor anymore, we have to pass it to this create method, the same as we did it with our binds instance arguments. And if our app component would have a component dependency on another component, like we learned it in part 11, we would have to pass this other component as an argument to this method as well. But we don't use component dependencies here. And if you are ever confused about these rules, then you can just click on factory, press Ctrl B, and take a look at the documented source code, because all the rules are written down there as well. And then we go into our example app class and rebuild our project. We ignore any warnings that come up. And now instead of create, we can call factory. This method was auto-generated by Dagger. And on this factory, we call create and pass a new driver module, to which we have to pass a string for the driver name. And we are almost done. I just want to make one more change in our car class. Because down here in this log message, I also want to show the driver name. So we can see that we successfully passed this value. Okay, let's run it. And we can see Hans now appears in our log message. So this is how you use component factories as a more concise and compile time safe alternative to a component builders. As usual, if you're confused, take a look at the code in the description box. If this video was helpful, please leave a like, and then we see us in the next part. Take care.